The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. It's May 15th. It's beautiful outside. I got Malik Hill across from me. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, NBA playoffs are concluding, coming to a conclusion of the second round. Um, things are starting to wrap up. And um, we got some some news in the NFL. There's going to be um, even more tonight as the schedule gets released, which uh, I think we have our varying opinions on. Um, the one thing that we wanted to note just before we get into the uh, meat and potatoes, as I like to say, Caitlin Clark made her WNBA debut. How much do you care on a scale of 1 to 10? I care some because my relationship with the WNBA is kind of weird compared to most people. I I grew up with the Detroit Shock a former Detroit WNBA team, mm-hmm. like 10 minutes away from me. I live like 10 minutes away from the palace. I had two older cousins that both played basketball. One was a boy, one was a girl. Mm-hmm. And they both watched the Detroit Shock. They used to go to Shock games. So I grew up in a era and like area where yeah. WNBA basketball and women's basketball was like respected. Mm-hmm. As I got older, I kind of noticed that wasn't <laughs> like a – thing all around the country yeah a lot of my friends kind of take it as a joke which has become like a cultural thing i mean hey back then the shock were good i went they to were. some i went to a few shock games i think they won three championships in the 2000s yeah something like that if i can remember mm-hmm. but i'm saying all that to say i've still paid attention to women's basketball throughout the years and caitlin clark has been the biggest thing yeah in a uh, long time maybe since like Candace Parker came into the WNBA, or I'd have to think of who else, but Maya Moore. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Caitlin Clark, she's been insane. She she had a crazy career at Iowa. One of the best women's players of all time. Uh, coming into this game, <clears throat> there was a ton of hype. She struggled to start. Mm-hmm. She still ended with 20 and 10. But... I, I think some people were like trying to see her fail. Yeah. They were anticipating her kind of being a bust after one game. I saw it on social media, people making fun of her. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't mad at what Diana Taurasi said when she was still at Iowa and she said she'll have an adjustment period. Yeah. And she'll most likely struggle. And people were like going, going at Diana Taurasi. She's probably right. She got stripped a few times. She's she's like trying to just translate the her exact game to mm-hmm. the WNBA. And she'll have to change a few things and get better, but yeah, that goes with everybody. I think that's something I brought up. She she had ten turnovers in her yeah. debut. Um, I guess they like set a record for debut of something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so she had ten turnovers, which is never good. And then I had mentioned it before because one of her tournament games, I think she had like thirty or thirty five. Um. But she had like 12 turnovers in that game. So that's a thing that she does every once in a while. Now, it's not all the time. But there's some games where it just seems like she's discombobulated and she turns the ball over a lot. So that might be the biggest adjustment going forward. I didn't have a huge problem with what Diana Taurasi said either. My biggest problem with it was that it seemed like she was like throwing shade at Caitlin Clark for maybe getting too much hype. There was a little bit of that. But because knowing Diana Taurasi is known as like a pretty much like a notorious asshole. Yeah. And I'm completely fine with that when it comes to especially basketball. Mm. Like I'm a Kobe Jordan guy. They rub people the wrong way and I loved it. Yeah. I loved the way Diana Taurasi does things. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't mind it. I guess my only problem is that in women's sports, because they they're so far behind right now in the NBA from the NBA. That I feel like there needs to be a period of like lifting each other up 
And I know there's going to be trash talk on the court. I don't have a problem with that. But, like, outside of the game to have your veterans, like, not seem fully excited for this new young talent to come into the league just seems a bit weird. Like, I would have rather it been like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to to guard her and show her what the WNBA is all about. Like, that seemed more – that seems yeah. more competitive fire Diana, to me. Diana Taurasi comes strictly from the competitor standpoint. Yeah. And she's going on. A lot of people are annoyed that she's like going on 42 mm-hmm. and she has no plans of leaving and she still wants to prove yeah. that she's the best. Mm-hmm. I I love that type of stuff, but I can understand the the downside of that also. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't care too much. I probably won't really watch too much, but I watch highlights. I don't watch a lot of – I watch women's college basketball like I watch men's college basketball yeah. more than the pros. It's wild that Caitlin Clark is probably going to be on the same echelon as LeBron James as far as ESPN coverage goes. Like, yeah. she will be highlights all the time, and you're going to hear about it all the time. Yeah. And it's probably going to get to the point where you're either going to love her or you're going to hate her. Yeah. Every time she has a bad stretch, they're going to – Show it every time she she's going crazy. They're going to hype it through the roof. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then eventually she'll get to the point where all the uh, young girls growing up are going to look up to her. But then she's going to do what Steph Curry did and ruin the game because <laughs> all these kids are now going to think that they can shoot. Uh, so I, I, I'm excited to see what the evolution of all this um, can become in the future. Yeah. I, I don't know if you saw. Uh, I saw it on Twitter this morning. At the game, they had a bandwagon fan cam for everybody. <laughs> everybody that showed up in like Iowa, Caitlin Clark jerseys. Mm-hmm. It never supported the the uh, Connecticut. Sun. No, she's on the Indiana, Indiana Fever. Fever. Yeah, anybody who didn't like support the team beforehand and just came for Caitlin Clark, mm-hmm. they had like a bandwagon fan cam. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Now their next game, uh, I did notice, and she said it in her post game interview. That's like the only thing I saw. Um, they're gonna play the Liberty next, so. Sabrina Ionescu. She's one of the best in the game. That's She's like my favorite women's player. So uh, that'll be a good matchup right away for Caitlin Clark. So should be exciting. But um, will I pay attention to it? Probably not. Just maybe on the side. Look it up. Um, another little news and notes. The Nets have decided they're going to retire number 15 for my boy Vince Carter. How hot do you feel take. about that? I, I don't know how hot of a take this is. He wasn't that great for New Jersey. He was there for like four or five I, years. I disagree. And they traded him. I disagree, but I understand. What is? I don't know if he has a lasting memory to be there. That that's what. What is his yeah. like memory? What's the big? They made the Eastern Conference Finals with him, I believe. I, I think that's it. I don't remember them making the Eastern Conference Finals. I really don't. I don't. I don't know for sure. Like because because I'm the, pretty sure. What was it? The 2001 or something they made the that's toronto huh he made the eastern conference finals with toronto no 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 uh, the nets didn't the nets make the finals yeah, they made the finals without and then, him and yeah. that's why they went and traded for him and then the pistons put him out the eastern conference finals in 04 mm-hmm. and won the title right and then they went and got him in 05 06 i believe one of those years so i don't like think that. they made the eastern conference finals okay yeah, there. I I don't think there's. I mean, I guess if, the Pistons were there. Yeah, I'd have to remember what <laughs> yeah. years he was there. Um, because I here's. But how, I, I agree with you. Like, I don't think yeah. he deserves to be retired with the Nets. But I think, I think he was good for them. It was either the Pistons, the Heat, the Magic, or the um, Cavs. In that span of time between like '05 and like 2010. It yeah. was those four teams. Yeah, he was The tra- Nets never made these two conference finals. Yeah, so it was 04, 05. And let's see. That was Detroit, Miami. Um, the 04, 05. But was Det- to tell you the stats, yeah. his first year in New Jersey. I'm sure he had a really good year. He averaged 27 and a half. Yeah. Six rebounds. He was five high, He was high level Vince. So he was always above but, like 20 points yeah, a game. I, I, I don't think he should get his jersey retired in New Jersey. Yeah, I don't think so. Like he doesn't, he doesn't even mean as much to that city as Richard Jefferson does or Kenyon Martin. Jason Kidd, Jason like Kidd that. is the one that right. that's he he deserves to have his yeah yeah. But I agree with he you. He should like, have stake in that franchise as far as memorable guys. Like Toronto, one hundred percent. New Jersey, I don't know about that one. Yeah, it was kind of like a flash in the pan where they they went for it. Um, let's see, he was there. One, two, three, four, yeah, five seasons. That's tough. 
I mean, it's hard too because he was only with the Raptors for what six seasons. Um, it was from nineteen ninety eight to two thousand four, something like that. It seemed longer than that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, ninety eight to two thousand four. So seven so years. Hey, he's Air Canada. He was the MJ of Canada. Right. He brought Toronto into the forefront for NBA teams. They that year the Sixers made the finals. They took Philly to Game Seven. Yeah, they ended up losing, but yeah, it came down to a Game Seven, and he didn't end up getting Toronto to the finals. But he's an integral piece of that franchise. Yeah, I can't really find. I was trying to find a list of. Yeah, like they finished first in the division, but they are third in the conference. They made it to the conference semifinals where they lost to the Heat. Um, and then yeah, so they they never fully figured it out. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. I do agree with you, though. I, I think it, it's just not quite right for him to maybe get his number retired there. But, you know, if, if New Jersey, Brooklyn wants to do it, go for it. It's not a, it's not my place to say. Um, all right. Let's go to the NFL news real quick because then we can talk about the playoffs the rest of the time. I feel like, okay. What? We, we got to mention the draft pick, but. Oh, the let's, draft lottery. We can you do that. You want to do NFL first and then the draft pick? Uh, no. Let's let's just do the draft okay. lottery right now. <laughs> um, third year in a row, Joey. So the Pistons are now picking fifth again. That's three years in a row. Yeah. The last two we had years, the highest chances to get the first. The pick. last two years, they've been the worst team in the NBA, and they got the fifth pick. They've now missed out on potentially Paolo, Victor Wembanyama. And whoever you want this year, I guess. But um, do they need to change the draft lottery again? I have a very anti Pistons fan take on this. Okay, that pretty much all of them say the system is is wrong. It's broken. Things need to change. You know what my comment is? Boo hoo. Okay. Boo, freaking who? Yeah. You know who else cares outside of? Detroit about them getting the fifth pick for the third year in a row. Who else do you think cares, Joey? Nobody. Do you think Adam Silver even cares? <laughs> no. No one cares. But what this, about if the system is just broken for you, it does. Nobody cares. Yeah. Your cries don't mean anything. Well, how do you feel about the Wizards? You'll go mute. The Wizards get four. They were what? the second worst team. I thought the Wizards got two. Did they? It's Atlanta, Washington, Houston, San Antonio, Detroit. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. yeah, the Wizards got two. They were in the top four. They were the last ones, yeah. The problem was, okay, so so my biggest thing, last year we were all so excited because Victor Wembanyama was on the table. Yes. And they do all picks up to five, and then they take a break to go to the top four. The Pistons got announced at five last year, so our hearts were broken immediately. This year, somewhat of the same thing, but it came down to – because of the way the draft picks were lining up and because of former trades and things like that, we knew when we got to like pick six that uh, San Antonio, Atlanta, and um, who was the, who's the other one? Who was it? Washington? Not, not was Washington. It? Oh, okay. Houston? Houston. Okay. We knew Houston, Atlanta, and San Antonio were locked in to the top three. Or was it Charlotte? Because Houston had a better record than Charlotte. I can't remember. No, it was Houston. Okay. Because Charlotte picks sixth. Um, so we knew that there was only one spot left in the top four and the, both of the worst teams, the wizards and the Pistons were left. And as soon as I saw Charlotte get taken at sixth and then it's down to the Pistons and the wizards for that final four spot, I knew the Pistons were getting five again. And that is a terrible feeling to have. I'm not saying it's fully rigged. But the original reason that they changed the lottery odds was to prevent tanking. The Pistons in the last three years not have not tried to tank. <laughs> yeah. They have competed and failed. That's, I think, the most bothersome part. The other part that I don't think people are taking account of, the Atlanta Hawks were in the play-in game. Yeah. And they are picking number one in this draft. Yes. And Alex Sar could fit perfectly into their team if they want to move on from Clint Capella. Or they could, they've been talking about trades. They could package DeJounte Murray and the first round pick for some superstar if they want to go that way. Trey Young and the first round pick for some superstar. 
They got a lot of options. The Pistons, now because they sit at five, have no options. A team that made the play-in, could have made the playoffs, gets number one seed. The worst team in the league for the last two years gets the fifth seed, or the fifth pick, twice in a row. Something just feels It does feel wrong. wrong. And I'm not saying that it's rigged. I don't want it to be necessarily the worst team gets the first pick. I like the lottery. I think it's fun. But there needs to be some sort of protection there, and I don't know how to do it exactly. Um, but it, it's just, it irks me. This, it does feel wrong, and it's sad, and it's depressing as a Pistons fan. Mm-hmm. But before this system became this way, nobody cared about how the Knicks felt year after year when they couldn't get a top five pick and they also couldn't draft well. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared about the Timberwolves when they only hit on Kevin Love and couldn't do anything else right. And only, and they rarely ever got top five picks, too. <clears throat> no one cares. No one cared about the Knicks. <laughs> no one cared about the Timberwolves. And no one cares about the Pistons. Maybe. I, I, I just... I'm trying to I'm, just I'm not. I'm not jumping on the train of... Listen... Some franchises have horrible runs of luck mm-hmm. and decision making. The Pistons have both right now. Yeah. Did in the back did, of your did, mind this has happened. In the back of your mind, did you see when you saw San Antonio up there, did you think they were gonna get the number one pick again? Because I sure did. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking of I was once Detroit hit five, I just started laughing and everything else that happened, I didn't I don't remember seeing picks one through four. <laughs> yeah. I saw Detroit pick five and I just started laughing. And I kind of just like stopped paying attention. I had to rewind the YouTube TV like two or three minutes to see who got the top four picks. Yeah. Cause yeah. yes, it, it, it does feel wrong and it's not fair. I, I, I'm not about to do the pity party stuff. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm not, no one cares. I'm not necessarily either. It just, it sucks. Especially when, like, again, if this team was trying to tank, I wouldn't have sympathy for it. But because this team is actually trying to compete and their front office, I feel like, is holding them back, that's the most frustrating part, I think. How do you think it feels when you're actually trying to tank and things still can't go right? Well. Would, do you think that would feel worse? Like the Timberwolves for over 20 years maybe, and the Knicks but, for almost 20 years. Maybe, but again, that feels like karma. Like you're not trying to win. You're trying to get that first pick. That's I think that's the and, difference and, for me. And some teams still couldn't get it right. But I don't know. It's just, it's wild. Like you, uh, to me, you just got to pick your poison. Yeah. Again, in this system, things like this are going to happen. In the old system, things can still go terribly wrong. Yeah. And The Pistons picked Darko and won a championship. Before they fixed the system, the Pistons made horrible decisions for a decade. Yeah. And we're dealing with it now because of those horrible decisions. Mm-hmm. And then the system changed in the draft and things are still horrible. Yeah. And both of those instances, we saw, you know, about a decade of turmoil in between championships. We're going on two decades. Yes. We are on two decades. Had like. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's the problem right now. Six or seven years. When did this system change? Two years ago? Three Three years ago? Okay, so not a very long time. Four years ago? It's probably longer so than you think. So you hit the new system, and the Pistons have no luck. Mm. That's just how it is, man. We didn't have luck before this. Yeah. We had Austin Day. Oh, boy. That's what we had. And a big contract, Charlie Villanueva. Mm-hmm. Hey, but if you – have you listened to – I don't remember what podcast it was on. Charlie V recently did an interview. I'll, I'll listen to him, the Theo Pinson. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, he he talked a lot about Detroit and they how about, dark it was at yeah. those times. They said yeah. that when they got when they signed John Custer, who everybody remembers yeah. as our head coach, um, the the famous mutiny where the team basically yeah. half the team quit. Mm-hmm. So can't blame everything on Charlie V. But yeah, there there's been a lot of stuff that's going on and it just doesn't help. Now last year was way worse. Not losing out on Victor and stuff sucked. Um, yeah, this is the draft where there's supposed there's no top real top five. Yeah, it is what it. There are some people that are so down on the draft. There's still some talent. We'll get to that when it's almost yeah. draft time. I. The only thing I'll say right now, everybody's projecting them to take Matas Buzelis. 
please, please, please don't. That's all I say. There's I'll, so many other prospects I like more. My last thought on this will be I like this draft more than 2013. Alex Lynn and uh, Otto Porter, and I like this draft more than this. I didn't even know Alex Lynn was still in the league until a couple nights ago. He's a decade in. Yeah. I'm happy for Alex Lynn. Wild. All right, so draft lottery didn't go as planned once again. Um, all right, let's talk about some of this NFL news, and then we'll get into playoffs to finish out. So, big news in Detroit. Finally, Jared Goff signed to a contract. Four years, $212 million. Highest paid player in Lions history. I believe it's $170 million guaranteed. Um, coming out to about $53 million a year. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Where he got the at? Lions to the NFC Championship, and they were on the doorstep of a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. He was statistically almost the best quarterback in the league. What what do you what what were you supposed to do? Yeah, you, you had to pay him. Mm-hmm. I mean, in this system with these weapons, he's the best thing they've had. Pretty almost in franchise history. You got to go back to the fifties when there was the NFL championship to like Bobby Lane and all that stuff. Like Matt Stafford, we appreciated Matt Stafford. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get it done. A lot yeah. of good, not a bit, lot of big numbers, a lot of turnovers. Mm-hmm. Couldn't win enough. Yeah. Jared Goff got them to the doorstep for the first time in franchise history. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Uh, honestly, just locking him in for four more years. I love that it's a it's not a super long term deal. Like you can still get out of it if things go, you know, one eighty or something. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to, but you know, crazier things have happened. Um, or if he sustains some major injury that changes his career path or something like that, pray to God it doesn't happen. But it doesn't lock you in forever, I guess. And you could probably turn it around uh, and change some deals around and that you keep the young core together even with everything going on. Um, the other thing is that, yeah, I like the market is just, that's what it is. It's expensive. The quarterback market is crazy. The dumbest one is still Deshaun Watson has $230 million guaranteed. We didn't give that to Jared Goff. Now, I think that shows you the market realized how dumb that move was by Cleveland, but he's still up there. But there's guys like um, Joe Burrow still has to be paid, right? Um, who's the other one that I was just thinking of? There's a couple other guys that are up for contract that are going to probably didn't, get— Didn't Joe Burrow already get paid? I, didn't, I thought he got paid like after Pat Mahomes. I thought so too, but I yeah. remember some people saying— I remember him getting some big money. But— Either way, there's going to be more people down the pipeline that are going to get paid. And if everybody remembers what happened with Matthew Stafford when we signed him to that big deal, everybody was so worried about it. And by the end of everything, Matthew Stafford was one of the lowest paid quarterbacks in the league. Now, that's not going to happen this time necessarily because we've kind of seen what the market is at. Um, But I think he's going to be kind of middle of the road. And the cap's going to keep going up. It's supposed to jump up almost like $30 million next year or something like that. So this money is almost play money, as crazy as that sounds. And I think people are going to realize it's going to be just fine. It's going to be even market. Jared Goff is going to be paid like a top 10 quarterback, but he's played like a top 10 quarterback. I don't know what the big complaint is. And at this point, like, do you want Detroit to compete or do you want some them to just be like, oh, let's save money and keep – uh pushing things down the road. Yeah. We are, we were one half away from making the Super Bowl. You were a commodity vital bounce off his face mask. And we're, a few missed fourth down conversions from the Super Bowl. We were a couple little mistakes. Yes. Why would you not want to lock that in? We already locked in Penay. We locked in Amon Ross St. Brown. Lock in the quarterback that you're protecting and he's throwing it to. To me, it just, it just doesn't make sense where fans want us to save money and it's like oh we got to pay Aiden down the line okay we'll you'll worry make about that when it <laughs> yes. happens you can make cuts make... in other places yeah. we're about to lose um like we're gonna probably lose Frank Rag now like we've talked about Taylor Decker we're gonna have to retool the offensive line that's gonna take all that veteran money out of our pockets and we're gonna have to rely on rookie contracts that's how you make this revolving door 
look at any championship team, the Patriots, they just revolving guys that come in. Yeah, they usually have like your Gronks or um, like Kansas City has Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, but they already, the Patrick Mahomes deal was done so early, they've already restructured him around so that they can pay more people to come in there. They've lost Tyreek Hill. That was kind of a part of a money thing. They've lost some of their other guys. They keep bringing guys in and they keep winning Super Bowls. So it seems like they're doing something right. So as long as Detroit, as long as we trust Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, and it feels like every year we have to keep telling people to trust those guys, then we should just be fine. Do you want to win or do you want to just keep being the same old Lions? That's my question. To people. I think there's a lot of inherent fear in Lions fans that just won't go away Yeah. over years of what if this goes wrong? What, what if, if it does if, go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> we just made a big run. We we turned things around and we show we've shown that there is a light at the end of the tunnel if we want to get all philosophical. Like even if things go wrong next year, we still have the core to turn it around the following year and the following year. At least for 4 years with Jared Goff. Yeah. Besides uh, maybe the Packers core is a little younger, but mm-hmm. I saw somebody listed like the Lions like five or six best players they're all 25 or younger Mm -hmm. every single one of them besides the quarterback who's in his prime right now yeah all of your best players are under 25 Mm -hmm. and depending on your opinion i mean i've seen some people rank jordan love above jared goff and i think that's just a, a hype thing but like statistically he was he was the best quarterback like the last half of the season but Jared Goff got the Detroit Lions to the NFC Championship. Mm -hmm. That can't be understated. Right. We saw his playoff experience really helped in those playoff games. He looked really good. So, I don't know. To me, just just enjoy the ride. Have fun with it. The Lions are good. Yeah. Let's let's do all that we can to keep that together. All right. Um, So, Jared Goff got paid. So, now the Lions have $444 million dollars. Tied between three players of Penne, Sewell, Amon Rice, and Brown, and Jared Goff. And they're worth it. Which is wild. Yeah. But those are kind of the main guys. So we'll see. Hopefully uh, more of those young guys can step up and just makes the these, these season more exciting. Um, the other news that came out, the there's been some leaks around the schedule of what's been going on. Supposedly the opening night game is uh, Baltimore and... Kansas City, I think. Yeah. That's what I heard. Um, Again, these are all kind of rumored things like that. I think there's also like a Cowboys uh, Browns game or something like that. I think the opening Monday night game is Jets 49ers, something like that. Yeah. Again, it's all kind of leaks and rumors and things like that. The other one that got announced today, the teams aren't for sure, but they're another leak. Netflix. Netflix, I tell you, getting two or both. I think, I think there's only two this year. Of the Christmas games. Supposed matchups. Kansas City and Pittsburgh. And then Baltimore and Houston. How do you feel about Netflix getting into the NFL market? I'm not going to watch it. (laughs) The only NFL football I watch is Thursday Night Football on Prime. Mm -hmm. Just because it happens to be on Prime. I'm not diving into any other streaming football. I... It's too much. Like yeah. I, I will never like the fact that Michigan is going to have games on Peacock, mm-hmm. and I won't watch any other Big Ten games on Peacock. Yeah. I, I, I just refuse. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm not diving into the Netflix Christmas. I'm, are the games still going to be on regular like TV? I assume probably, probably. Like, you're not going to take them off like NBC and Fox. I assume uh, that would be insane. <laughs> you can probably only watch them locally, is what I would assume. Similar to. Uh, what was the game they did last year? They did like the on. peacock. They did the peacock NFL game, didn't they? Something like that. On Christmas? No, for like a Thursday night or something. Oh, well, yeah. Prime has the Thursday night game. No, but they did like a special one where like Peacock did their first NFL game or something, something like that. I I don't know. Or Paramount. It was Paramount. Paramount. Wasn't it? Paramount. I, I really don't even know. <laughs> Somebody. Okay. I have no idea. Either way. It was like a Miami. I remember the Toy Story game on Disney Plus. I remember that. It was like the Dolphins. Were Everybody should have watched that one. Yeah, there was like some new streaming service. Anyway, 
I'm with you. I'm probably going to watch it because we have Netflix right now. If we don't have Netflix, I'm not going to sign up for Netflix to watch a Christmas Day football game. Yeah. To me, Christmas has always been the NBA. I like now, exactly. I, I like that last year I got to watch NFL and NBA. That was just a treat. But if they're going to start pushing these other streaming services, it, it's going to be hard because like, I already hate that Bally Sports owns Detroit Sports. And um, they're falling apart. Yeah, and <laughs> so, now their yeah. games are like all blacked out, and nobody's gonna pick up. It's it's a mess, and I hate it. Bring so, back Fox Sports Detroit. That my, whole another our story. childhood. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to see the streaming services start getting into this is making me nervous. Um, again, I also watch Prime Thursday night games. We have Amazon Prime. We have for years, so it's it's just there. It's available. Um. But if they keep raising prices for these streaming services, I'm not going to go out of my way for NFL games to watch, you know, a specific game because of this streaming service. It's just, it's not in the cards. And then now we see that these streaming services are going to start combining together. I don't know if you've seen lately. There's yeah. like Netflix is going to try to combine with somebody else and HBO Max is going to try to combine with somebody yeah. else. I think it's Disney Plus. HBO Max already became Max. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. So I feel like it's starting to get into a mess. Are you situation. ready for cable to come back? Because that's what's um, going to happen. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> just turning into a cable yes. system. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of disappointing because I've also not liked the way that Netflix has has gone the last few years with the password sharing and all that stuff. They're just trying to harp down too much on it. Um, yeah, the the only NFL thing that I still like will go out of my way to pay for Red Zone. That's my every year I'll yeah, I get red zone free with YouTube TV. So yeah, that's basically my cable. Mm -hmm. So I usually pay for it on my YouTube TV package. We don't have it, but I'll go out of my way and pay for red zone because that's my favorite way to watch on Sunday. Usually if the lines aren't playing. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully this doesn't get too crazy because this year Christmas is on a Wednesday. So there's going to be the Wednesday Christmas games. There's probably still going to be a Thursday night game that day. There's going to be your Sunday games. You're going to be Sunday night, Monday night. Like the scheduling is going to be wild. Plus they have five international games this year. They have the Brazil game, uh, which is Green Bay and Jacksonville or something like that. They have three London games. And then Germany gets uh, the Giants and the Panthers. <laughs> what, a yes. what a game. What a game. Speaking of the Giants. It was also announced the Giants, for the first time ever, are on hard knocks this year. And it, did you did you not see it was the off season hard knocks? What is that? What it is? <laughs> Dang it! For the first time, they're doing it's like a hard knock spin off. They're doing like the off season before training camp. Oh, starts. man, that's, hard knocks doesn't hit the same. That's lame. Just like Bally Sports and Fox Sports to true. Bring back everything we had when we were younger. All this stuff is terrible. Oh, it is confirmed that those Christmas games are Christmas. Dang, really? I guess I should read the article a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, with a little twist. Off-season version of the franchise. Yeah. Let, let, let's just let's just move on. Hard Knocks off-season. July 2nd. It is the Giants 100 season. That's kind of cool. Is it? It's for Gi for Giants fans. It's kind of, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't cared about the Giants in years. Forget the off season. Hard wow, time. that's a yeah. That is that's interesting. Point. That's fun. <sighs> I wish they would have put that in the article <laughs> header. <laughs> anyway, so we'll see the off season of the Giants. Hooray! Hey, we Can't drafted wait. Malik Neighbors. We don't know what we're doing at our quarterback position. We lost Saquon Barkley. We're falling apart. <laughs> Um. Anyway, I had something else that I was going to say, and I can't remember it, so we'll move on. Oh, I was going to say, I'm more excited for the the Netflix special, the, the wide receiver thing or whatever I'm they're doing. much more excited for that, yes, uh, the wide receiver series. I mean, it helps that Amon Including Travis Kelsey, the tight end. Yeah. So, more Taylor Swift, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I didn't think. Listen, I'm going to rise on there, so you'll have something. That makes me think of something, though, and, and it can segue into the NBA playoffs. Watching Pacers games at home 
they cut to Caitlin Clark quite a few times. Yeah, she was up in the booth. Is she going to be the new Taylor Swift? I, she, There's only going to be I, like one or two more games anyway. Well, she's the a professional basketball player, so I, I think it's a little different. Taylor Swift she's is always an international a, superstar. But Caitlin is going to be on TV every week playing basketball, so that's like she does her job on TV for the most part. Yes, and she's been on TV. Just more of uh, pushing the narrative. You a big Clark. fan of the tortured poets department? The what? Taylor's latest album? I have no idea what you're talking about. So good. I'm happy you don't. <laughs> Overrated. Um, <laughs> geez. Back to sports, not the Taylor Swift special. Um, anyway. Oh, one more thing that you just made me think of. Special. Did you watch the Tom Brady roast? I saw clips. That's all, That was an old school roast. I didn't they, like it. They were so, that was, man. I, I didn't like it. The Aaron Hernandez jokes. Yeah. They went a little too hard. They went pretty far on a lot of the jokes, honestly. Yeah. Um, which made it to me, and there's a fine line of like, like how far can you go with like dirty jokes? I feel like they went over that line and then it just feels distasteful. Yeah. But, you, you could tell some people just had looks on their faces. Like, uh, whoa, whoa. I will say Nikki Glazer. She was great. Yeah. She's she pretty was, funny. She was, she was really good. Yeah. She told that line of like, she was, she mm-hmm. was right there. And that's usually what she does. I'm I'm not a big comedy person, but my wife loves Nikki Glazer. So yeah, I saw a little bit of clips, but. I never sat down and watched it. Anyway, all right, NBA playoffs to wrap things up. Where are we at? Let's start with. Uh, you want to start with the one that doesn't matter Celtics that much? Celtics and Cavs. Yeah, yeah. Donovan Mitchell isn't playing. Yeah, Celtics won the last game without him. Mm-hmm. He's not playing again tonight. I probably won't watch most of it. <laughs> yeah, the one game yeah. that the Cavs won, Donovan Mitchell basically went off. Um, people are starting to come call into question Darius Garland. Got a pretty big contract a couple years ago and uh, not seemingly living up to it. Um, do you think the Cavs like need to figure out a retooling, or do you think they can keep continuing to do what they do? Everybody I mean, seems to say Donovan and Darius can't play at their highest level together. So I guess I'll just – what happens when Donovan leaves? Because I don't think he's staying in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And what is Evan Mobley going to become? Yeah. Like – he has these games where he scores, he goes like 25 and like 12 and six blocks and looks like the guy that was a top three pick. Mm-hmm. And he has like five other games where it's like 11 points, eight rebounds, five blocks. Yeah. And it's just not enough. Yeah, he's got an so, inconsistency to him. Yeah, they, the they got to retool some things. I, I think Isaac Okoro, he's just not good enough a shooter to be starting games. Mm-hmm. Like he's a good defender, but he doesn't do the three and D thing well enough. They got to make some decisions. Yeah. Um, and to me, it looks like the Celtics are just far and above everybody else. They I don't, need Porzingis if they want to uh, win yeah, a championship, but yeah. they're good for now. Um, so let's go to the other side of the Eastern Conference then. We got the the Knicks and the Pacers played last night. Knicks beat them by 30, uh, beat the brakes off of them. And uh, Tyrese Halliburton has been like super up and down. It's been weird. Uh, six points game one. Mm-hmm. I think 30 plus the next two games. Yep. And nine points last night. 13. Oh, 13 points? Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, nothing to write home about. Yeah. Five of nine. Only one five of assists. Three. Yeah. 13 and five. On the road, he's quiet and not aggressive. And at home, he's talking trash and taking shots. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not how you get it done. Especially when you are playing an absolute monster on the other side right now. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson. He keeps surprising Listen, me, I'll be honest. He he is he is what I wish I w- could have been as a basketball player. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a lefty. I have handle, and I'm, I'm like, strong. I Everything he does, I'm just like, why couldn't my game be like that? <laughs> why, why couldn't I have developed like that? Yeah. Because I wish I was that type of basketball player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, him and Anthony Edwards are my favorite players, but the Knicks have become my team. Mm. They remind me of teams from the 2000s. And just how hard they play. The fact that they have injuries. Some guys have gone down. OG Ananobi was having his best stretch of his career, and then he got hurt. Yeah. These Nova Knicks, even Chinzo, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart. When one of them falls off, the other two show up mm-hmm. and they got popped 
in Indiana before they won this last game. Tom Thibodeau made the switch. He put Deuce McBride in the starting lineup, and it helped them instantly. I love what he brings off the bench, his scoring. He plays hard defense. I, I love everything about how the Knicks play. Mm-hmm. They they remind me of the era of basketball I grew up watching, yeah. where it was a knockout drag out fight every play every series, mm-hmm. and there was no walk through the playoffs back then. Yeah, I yeah I'm a big fan, mm-hmm. and I I hope Porzingis gets fully healthy, but I would also love to see the Knicks just make this magical run to the finals, mm-hmm. and for that to happen, Porzingis would have to be out. Yeah. So I'm like I'm conflicted, right. Yeah, it feels like it'd be a bad matchup for the Knicks to go up against the Celtics. Yeah. Um, actually, I actually think they would fight them hard. Yeah. I think they fight them really hard. Because Jason Tatum, we, we've got to have a conversation. Yeah. Anthony Edwards is 22. Mm-hmm. I think he's already raising above Jason Tatum. Yeah. Yeah, on a night to night. Shea Alexander is above Jason Tatum. <laughs> yeah, on a night to night basis, that's for sure. He's, he's just not doing it. Mm-hmm. But the team is so good that the Celtics are still winning. Right. But you play the Knicks, Jalen Brunson is coming at your head every single game. Mm-hmm. So that's if the Knicks win the series. They got to go to Indiana next. Right. I hope they close it out in six. It'll be tough. But yeah. I've I've enjoyed the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, it's been a little disappointing because there have been a couple of blowouts. But, yeah, it, it would be nice if it would go to seven or something like that. Yeah. Uh, One, one little uh, note. Uh, Miles Turner averaging seven rebounds. Mm-hmm. He's become more of a, a shooter, outside he, guy. I, I'm 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 old. I think I think I'm just too old. Mm-hmm. This I hate it. I yeah. hate it so much. He's shooting like seventy percent from three in the series, which is insane. Yeah. He did he shoot like five or seven from three last He's night? He's a rim protector, three point shooter hybrid. He shot four of seven from three last night. Mm-hmm. He's barely missing in this series. Great in the postseason shooting, but he just won't rebound. Mm-hmm. Like he won't go in the. I, they have a huge disadvantage because of this. Yeah. I don't know if Rick Carlisle is like. I, I think. I don't, I don't know. I just don't understand. You're seven feet tall, you're athletic. Mm-hmm. And you won't rebound. Yeah. That's wrong to me. In in every every way. Mm-hmm. Not a fan. Yeah. Isaiah Hardenstein had like 18 rebounds last night. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go over to the Western Conference. Mavericks and the Thunder tied at two apiece. Tonight is game five, big swing game. I think the Thunder are going to win the series. Luka isn't healthy. Mm-hmm. Can you depend on PJ Washington blacking out again, dude? He's been unconscious this whole series. He's been killing it. I don't they even needed, know who they he is. They need him to score like at least thirty to win this next game. To me, he's gone twenty-one. Well, the first game he had ten, right? First game he had ten. Yep, ten. Then twenty-nine, twenty-seven, twenty-one, shooting over sixty percent from the free or the three-point line. Average about fifty percent probably. Between them. That's crazy. For a guy that they just kind of traded for, just as maybe a young piece, and he's kind of turned into something more. Um, Pretty crazy. And then on the opposite side of that, Kyrie Irving has been... 20 points, 9 points, 22, 9 points. Yeah. And then Luka shot terribly the other night. Also had seven turnovers. He has done nothing but complain and miss shots. Mm Mm-hmm. I hate this version of Luka Doncic. I can't stand it. Yep. And that's been my whole concern about Luka this whole time is like there's just something about him that I don't I don't know if he can get over the hump. The, to me it's worse now because it, he's obviously like not 100% mm-hmm. and that's mentally messing with him and he's taking it out on like the refs and everybody else. Yeah. And it's it sucks to see. It's it's just not good yeah. basketball. I'm just nervous he's going to be the next great player to never win a ring. Unfortunately, it's possible. I mean, Dirk had to turn into a Greek god mm-hmm. to take Dallas on like a magical final finals run. Yeah, and Luca has the talent to be able to do something like that, but I don't know if he can tap into that that kind of greatness mm-hmm. where every time. 
an opposing player goes off, you go off even more. Right. Dirk did it every single time in 2010. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Luka can do that. Yeah. And then the whole Kyrie thing, like he's a great player. He averaged 25 this this whole season. But in since these, that closeout game against the Clippers, he hasn't been very good. Right. He's been okay. Yeah. But you need him. Like he's supposed to be that guy that wins you games. He's known for being clutch in the playoffs. Exactly. And we haven't we haven't fully seen it. Um. So I don't know. The, and the Thunder are just deep. They play good defense. Chet Holmgren is good. Jalen Williams is outstanding. Shea is. I mean, he was runner up of the MVP. Lou Dort, he's that tough guy. They make me angry. Like, because they shouldn't be this good already. And Mark Dagnall shouldn't be this good of a. I I don't I don't I don't I don't get it. As a Pistons fan, stuff like this just. They also have another it puzzles me. They also still have another lottery. It really pick. puzzles me, Joey. Another lottery pick coming up. It grinds my gears. They got. I, when was the last time you heard somebody say that? Uh, a while. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a, a, like a 2026 first round pick from another trade. Like they still have picks. Sam from, Presti, you have to trade these picks. They still have picks from their other trades. He's not going to do anything with them. Trade the picks, man. Jesus Christ. They're, they're, they're so good. They're all under like 25, except for Shea, but he. <sighs> they Josh Giddy doesn't even matter at this point. And they no. still playing well. No. Like Case and Wallace is playing great defense on Kyrie Irving. Mm hmm. Think if this team had like Clay Thompson or something. Why is Isaiah Joe so good? Remember how we said at the very beginning of the year they had to make a crazy cut where they had to cut like Jeremiah Robinson Earl or somebody like somebody like that was going to get cut, and Isaiah Joe was kind of there as one of those guys. And you're like, man, one of these guys has to get cut, and they're solid players. I think eighty percent of this roster would be no help on the Pistons. Yeah, you know how sad that is. I think the I think the Pistons would barely improve mm-hmm. if most of these players were in that culture and on that team and in that organization. Yeah. These dudes are about to make the Western Conference Finals probably. Mhm. It's it, insane. And Gordon Hayward doesn't even play for this team. Like he plays a couple minutes, but it's it's maybe like the most unnecessary move Sam Presti has made mm-hmm. signing Gordon Hayward. Yeah. He's just there. But it's I don't know. It's wild. I can't wait for them to to win. Yeah, the the Mavericks. They one of them. One of their players has to pull something out. It needs to be Kyrie. Mm-hmm. It really needs to be him. But he has to show it. He hasn't shown it yet in this series. Yeah. And then finally, the the one that we were kind of most excited about going into it, and it's it's held up for the most part. It's been wild. Um, it's been a real like. Yeah. Up and down seesaw series. So I think we talked last week. The Timberwolves took the first two games. Um, They're up 2 0. Anthony Edwards has been electric. Yeah. Game two, a lot of people have said that that was the best defense they've seen since like the Pistons in 04. Mm-hmm. How aggressive they were and how they shut down everybody on the Nuggets yeah. was crazy to watch. And then Jokic said, no more. And the Nuggets have now won three in a row. Yeah. And he saved his best for. When he got his third MVP trophy. Yep. 40-13 and no turnovers. Yeah. Officially announced last night, Jokic got another MVP, and he just went crazy. He likes hyper-efficient, passing the ball, getting rebounds, scoring 40. I know we keep talking about it, but like, where can he end up at the end of his career? If he can keep this up consistently and stay healthy. And if he wants to keep doing this. Yeah, I think that's because, the biggest. Yeah, I've, the biggest I've had if. conversations with some of my friends saying that I think he might be done by like 32. Mm-hmm. What if he wins like one more MVP and one more championship? He's like, I'm going back to som- to somber Serbia. And I'm just getting back in- into horse racing for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I think there's a chance he could just cut it. Right. Like into his 30s. But anyway, I, he's unstoppable. He's unstoppable. His IQ is all time great. And there's no. They made him uncomfortable for like a game and a half. Mm -hmm. And he adjusted. And everything around him is so perfect team wise. And Mike Malone is such a good coach that it only takes a few games for him to just settle back in and it's nothing all over again. Mm -hmm. Like he's playing with Rudy Gobert at this point. Yeah. 
I, I I don't know what they do. Also, Aaron Gordon has lit up the past few games. All the Reggie Jackson, your nemesis, <laughs> has given them positive minutes off the bench. Uh, Jamal Murray is back on. Like everything Minnesota did not need has happened. Yeah, in the past three games. And the only one that's fallen off is Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, he Where was on he? fire like the first seven eight games of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, now the Nuggets, former champions, look like they they're back on track. Yeah. Um, Minnesota is going to have to dig real deep in that game six. Yeah. And Edwards is only twenty two, but I I see the Kobe and the MJ in him. Mm-hmm. What will he do in this game six? Yeah, because it's it seems like he can't fully trust Cat at this point mm-hmm. with both the injuries and Cat. Just he wants to stand out there and shoot like Miles Turner. Yeah, Nasri the sixth man of the year. But he's also young and hasn't been in these situations a ton. Mm-hmm. He he has to go off. Yeah. He has to. Right. And then the problem is, too, on like a similar to the Eastern Conference, like if the Nuggets make it to the, the Western Finals and they face the Thunder, I don't know if the Thunder can do it. I, I, they're I just, not ready for that. I just I don't, don't so. see the path. Chet versus Nikola Jokic. Yeah. I love Chet, but man, that is baby food. Right. <laughs> Barbecue chicken in the words of Shaq. Chet It's not fair. Chet has a a possibility or a, a much higher ceiling than Rudy Gobert, but he's not at that defensive level yet. Yeah. And Jokic makes Gobert look silly. So it's gonna be a tough night for the rook. Um but I mean, again, that lines up for a possible Denver Boston finals, which everybody expects. would be great. Yeah. But um no surprises necessarily. Do you imagine a New York OKC final? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, or if the we world got like, flip upside down. Again, or like we talked about, if you got like an OKC Minnesota Western Conference Finals. Just that alone. That'd be, that'd be insane. As wild. Nobody bet a future on that. Yeah. So, we'll see. It, it, it has been a pretty good playoffs for the most part. I've enjoyed the games that I've, that I've watched. Um, so... Don't really have a favorite. I kind of like most of the teams going forward. Maybe not the Pacers because they're not they're not consistent enough, and the Cavs have no chance. So anybody else, I don't I don't really mind who wins. I don't think this year. So anything else uh, before we go? Uh, you quick, quick Tigers news. Uh, they're right down the middle because their pitching is very good. Scooble is a high level pitcher. A potential Cy Young in the future, and they can't hit. Uh, they lost two one yesterday, and I just got an alert that they lost two nothing mm-hmm. to Miami. Bad bats. Yep. So better than last year, but still not that great. Javi Baez still. Oh my God! Like, I think I saw he went like three of thirty two in the. Yeah, that was the status. God, something like that. Is uh, is it like a top five worst signing in baseball? At probably. least modern baseball history. Probably. The only thing that's saving him right now is apparently he's been fielding really well, but he's not producing anything from his bat. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, the Tigers are a mess. Um, it stinks because they're not a, like they have good pitching. Yeah, they just can't hit the ball. I believe. Let me, let me check, I believe they're twenty one and twenty one now. So literally, like right down the middle. Mm-hmm. If they had good offense, they might like have a chance to win the division. Yeah, I'm sure they would. They're twenty one and twenty two, three and seven in their last ten. Yeah. Yeah. If you think of all their big deals, Javi Baez hasn't worked out. Spencer Torkelson, he has the record for longest time for a first baseman to not hit a home run in a season. Now he's hit he hit like back to back last week or a couple days ago, which is I guess okay. Um Casey Mize, remember how hyped he was? Haven't heard a peep because of injuries. Spencer then- Torkelson has a big hit every now and then, but yeah, still oh. not living up to the hype. Yeah, they they uh, lost one zero yesterday to the Marlins and two zero today to the Marlins. Nice, gotta love it. Yikes! <laughs> Bring on football season, please. Um, all right, that is uh, views from the sidelines. I think we're gonna. I'm like gonna officially start messaging Chris multiple times to get him on this Pistons episode. Because the sooner we get it time. over, the sooner we get this cleanse done. Oh man, I cannot wait. <laughs> I can't wait. The better. 
Um, I know maybe, I mean, maybe we have to wait till the, the president is filled that position, but I don't know if it's really, it's not really needed. Um, but hopefully we'll do that soon. So we can just tell everyone to just fire the entire squad, um, and start over. <sighs> That's a disappointing way to end. I hate bringing up the Pistons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this has been Views from the Sidelines, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Lions are trying to hold Detroit together by themselves. Good luck.